This is Seth Gills here, or also known as Guillotine from the Beers and Deers podcast. Give us a like and a follow. We really appreciate it. We're on YouTube, Spotify, Stitcher, what have you. So I wanted to make this video on this beautiful piece of equipment that Hoyt has recently came out with, the Hoyt Ventum 30. And I wanted to wait a little while to make the video so I could give it a more authentic review after having some time with it. Sending quite a few errors with it. I've shot it you know, 10 yards, actually three yards, paper tuning, three yards all the way out to 115 yards tonight. And I think I can finally say, Hoyt knocked it out of the park. The name, let's start with the name. The Hoyt Ventum, it, it, if you thought it was some kind of funny twist on the word Venom, you were wrong. It's actually a lot cooler than that. The word Ventum is a Derivative from Latin, actually. The word mentum means the wind. So, pretty pretty cool. I thought it was cool. I don't know if you think it's cool. I thought it was cool. So, the wind here, the ventum, has all kinds of new features this year. Not only did they give it an all-new motor, which is, I, I really like the cams. I think they perform fantastic. They went away from the old yoke system here, and now you... To tuning them, you have to do some shimming. It's just it's all preference on different ways that you got to tune these cams and you know prevent cam lean and whatnot. But it seems that they're fairly easy to tune to me. But that's all. That's more of a preference thing. And a lot of other brands have gotten away from that as well with the binary cam system. Uh, also with the cams, another thing. And I don't know how well you can see this on the video because I'm videotaping this on my phone, but. Okay, you can see it, all right. So right there, you can see it says 85 or 80% let off. It's a little tiny star screw. And, well, it's not that tiny, actually. I think it's a T15 or a T20. But this star screw, you can, on the fly, adjust the amount of let off that these cams are going to give you. 80% would be, I guess, a performance mode, which is why I switched it to 80 it, it might give you a, a little bit faster of a shot. and It's a difference in three pounds that you're holding when you're at full draw, if, if you have if you have 70 pound limbs. So these limbs are 70 pounds. At 85% let off, you're holding just over 10 pounds when you're at full draw. At 80%, you're holding 14 pounds when you're at full draw. So it's a little more than a three pound difference. And for me, I. I couldn't really tell a difference, so I'm going to leave it at 80. I like the way it performs. It shoots great. Some other new things that we got from Hoyt this year, and the one that really sold me on it personally that I thought was, was really interesting is the ability to have this lower stabilizer mount hole. This position will enable you to achieve a lower center of gravity, and it will enable you to get the weight further out from your riser compared to the traditional mounting position which, I mean, you, if you know anything about archery, you can understand the obvious benefits of that. Does it look kind of silly? That's up to interpretation. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. I think it looks awesome. And I really like the fact that I can mount my Tacticam here and during hunting season. So for, for 3D shooting, I think it's great to be able to have the lower position and get the stabilizer out a little further. However, for hunting, you know, you're thinking like, oh man, I'm going to be banging that against brush and stuff. And I tend to agree, it might be a pain in the ass out there. So for hunting, because I'm going to be shooting whitetail typically 40 yards and under, and 40 is a long shot. Most of the time you're, you're shooting whitetail 20 yards. I don't need all that weight in the front. It's, it's my pin's not moving a whole lot at 20 yards. So during hunting season, I can actually move this stabilizer here and put my tax cam down here. So you, you have that option. I think that's awesome i really like the the second hole option there that they provided us with also new this year is this sl sidebar mount and it's it's really cool as opposed to the traditional sidebar mount that you you would have a, a hole in the rear of your riser this is a special you have to buy this separately so that's one downside this a hoyt sl sidebar mount depending on where you get it it's about 65 bucks but it it's infinitely adjustable and it's going to put all that weight on the left or right side. You can mount it either way and you have two different positions to mount it. 
I think it's really nice. I like that a lot. Yes, you have to buy it separately. You don't have the threads. However, I really like it. I think it works great. So if you don't mind spending an extra couple bucks, I think it's awesome. In addition to that, they also have the integrate rest position. So you can mount your rest to the center of the riser, which also enables you to have a more centered weight distribution. I don't have that. I got my older one on there. Uh, would I like to have one? Yes, they're running about 250 bucks if you get one from Hoyt. So I just, I didn't, I didn't mind getting this one because I got a sidebar on here anyway. I'm just going to keep this one on here and I've got no issues with it. You can use whatever you need to, whisker biscuit, whatever you want. Also new this year is if you look closer here and I can try to show you with the spot hog sight on there, but you can see right here, I've got these two uh, threaded out holes here. Now, what that is for is every bow that you get is going to come with a little pachitney rail that will actually mount to the front of your bow. Now, the, the use of that is it has the same kind of train of thought as the integrate, as the, the new thing. What they're trying to do is just get all your weight distributed much more beneficial to much more ergonomically. So that the what that pachitney rail is going to give you is, is your sight is then going to have the weight also distributed right in the center of the riser as opposed to one side or the other depending whether you shoot right or left now i think that's awesome as well however the only site that as far as i know at the time of me creating this video is uh, excel is making a site that can be mounted using the kidney rail but i don't think anybody else has it i think spot hog black gold and I'm sure there's plenty of others, but I've heard that they're going to make systems to where you can use the Pachitney rail as well. Now, I don't know, engineering, from an engineering standpoint, I'm not sure how a dovetail is going to work with that, which, I don't know, who knows, maybe they'll have little sections that you can add to it, and that kind of works similar to a dovetail, you know. We'll see. We'll see what they do. Uh, they're a lot brighter minds than me, so I'll just have to wait and see what they think of. But I think it is really cool, especially for a hunting site. Very easy. You can slap a rail on the kidney rail, and you're not applying any torque to your riser on one side or the other. So we went over the cams. We went over the kidney rail. You got an extra hole. Everybody likes that. You got the new SL sidebar mount. I think I covered just about everything that's new this year for the Ventum. And as far as what I put this bow through, I think I can say better than just about anybody out there, I dry fired. Now, I, huge mistake. You're saying, what an idiot. Yeah, that's how I felt as soon as I did it. I, I don't know why. I just started shooting. We have a video all about it. Um, we did a podcast and I, I discussed it in depth. So check out the podcast if you'd like to. Go back. It's about two weeks ago. and The, the label is I dry fired my whole event third. So it's pretty easy to find if you want to hear that full story. But with that being said, it stood up fine. There was absolutely nothing wrong with the cams, absolutely nothing wrong with the riser or the limbs or anything. The only thing that was, did break, not even my cable, so the, my string did break. So I got a new America's Best Platinum bow strings on there and kind of glad I got it anyway. Sucks that I dry fired it, but Hoyt, they, uh, they put these things through a whole lot of dry fire tests and everything. And they stand up to it. That's they just they make an a, amazing bow. So I got lucky there. Didn't have any issues with it. And as far as performance goes, what I've noticed particularly about this bow is that it gives you just a amazing draw cycle. When you draw this bow, as opposed to my previous bow, it is just amazingly smooth. I can shoot this bow significantly longer than I could my previous bow just because of, of how easy it is to draw. At 70 pounds, I think I was coming in at 74 pounds. It just, it, it's super smooth, super easy to draw and very easy to hold at full draw. There's no giant dump into the valley. It, it, it's really nice. I like it a lot. And consistency is just, it's super dead in hand. I mean, when you shoot this thing, it is zero vibration. It, it's, it's an awesome bow. I can't, can't speak highly enough about it. So if you're looking for a nice new bow this year, and if you were thinking, considering maybe this Venom is the way to go, hey, you got my cosign. This thing is sweet. Go to your local dealer, check it out, send some arrows to it. Pretty confident you're going to feel the same. Also, Give us a follow, give us a subscribe, give us a like, send some comments, 
I'm always very quick to respond and, and the other co-hosts. We appreciate it. We appreciate everybody. Hope to see you at the Total Archery Challenge at Seven Springs, PA. And if not, I hope to talk to you on YouTube or Instagram or Facebook. Check us out. Appreciate it, guys. Get out there and get some.